Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 980. Yes, 980. 20 more to go to get to the Magic Thousand, so that's going to be late February. Something special is going to happen then because it is my thousand. Not because, but as well as is my thousandth, thousandth, thousandth broadcast. Let's see how that works. Um, but let's get back to today, shall we? So today we talk about going deep versus being superficial. The title I put together was okay, but I want to speak about the idea about dating differently, meaning going deeper. How about that? All right, let's talk. Um, the reason I'm speaking to this is because I've become very aware and somewhat challenged by the level of superfic superficiality. I'm getting tongue-tied tonight. Let's try this again. <laughs> The, the um, superficiality that people carry around when it comes to connection with other people in relationships of any sort, not just romantic relationships, but how there's a certain um, thinness to the connection. And I feel it quite personally, and you may feel it too when you're around other people, where your experience with them has a very surface experience. Right? How are you? Fine, everything's good, everything's good, blah, blah, blah. Rather than deep stuff that might be more effective. It's actually more effective and more effective because both those words in a way work. One with an E, one with an A. Because if you didn't know what effect is versus effect, look at the dictionary. They mean different things. That's homework, by the way. <laughs> Unplanned, but homework. So the thing I want to speak to is that we have the availability to have deep, deep connection and deep intimacy with every person we meet. Whether it's your first date, whether it's a new business relationship, whether it's a, a neighbor, roommate, any of those things. Now, when I talk about intimacy, let me be clear, because <laughs> some people presume when I talk about intimacy that they might be talking about something sexual. That's possible, but not required in any of these things. Intimacy is, a, is an ability to open your heart, open your soul, to connect somebody deeply and be that vulnerable. Now, before you run away with that one, let me say this about vulnerability. I learned in a seminar many, many years ago um, actually, it was 80, 1985, so it's been, no, excuse me, 80s, yes, 1985, in case you're tracking numbers, that's quite a while ago, yes, I was an adult then, <laughs> and in that seminar, we, just, we were talking about the power of vulnerability versus the, well, it's the power of vulnerability and the vulnerability of power, that could be a whole other talk on its own, ooh, juicy, but the thing I want to speak to is the fact that being vulnerable is not a weak place to be. In fact, when you're that vulnerable or that transparent, that open, basically nothing can hurt you. It really is. It really is a a mind shift. Or is there something else? <laughs> being polite. But the fact that what we're doing with when we're being vulnerable and being clear with somebody, being that intimate, is that we are safe inside ourselves. In fact, when you're being that surface, I mentioned at the beginning about having the surface level of playing, where you're being um, um, what's one of you for? Superficial, duh, put in the title. Being superficial, it's actually easy to get hurt there. Surprisingly so, because what happens is when you are deep and true to yourself, then you are absolutely anchored in your own truth. True to yourself creates truth. So when you're around somebody else, no matter what they're doing, you're unshakable. You're actually unshakable. And if you're being superficial, surface dancing around that way, you may never get that deep. But the thing is, when you're being superficial, you tend to take things more personally. Now, this is a this is a, a subconscious wiring thing we carry. Vulnerability, depth, is usually usually where we find ourselves to be most safe. Unless you're carrying wounds, you haven't healed yet, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But the thing is, when you're being superficial, oftentimes it's a protection because you feel so von. Um, no, that's the wrong word I want to use. You're feeling actually more. You're feeling weak, basically. And that somebody, something somebody says can be impactful in a very negative way. You'll take it personally, you'll be wounded, you'll, you'll, you'll feel hurt by what happened. So it's actually counterintuitive and it's backwards. I know you might be going, that doesn't make sense, but it does, trust me. Have you walked both paths, superficial and deep? I'll choose deep every time. Because when you're in your depth and really connected to what's going on, as I said before, nothing can hurt you. Now I'm talking physically, I'm talking emotionally and mentally. So let me speak to that wound part I mentioned earlier. Because the thing is, if you're dealing with this um, fear of being deep because you're carrying wounds in the past, this is where it's important for you to do the healing work. Because if you're being stuck, stepped away from, or um, um, removed from being able to be deep, 
Maybe it's because you're so afraid of being hurt. The truth, though, is when you're in your debt, the, work, the hurts don't matter anymore. But getting through the hurts is not like you just bulldoze through and go deep. It's a choice about actually having healing happen. To actually spend some time working with someone who is expert in the area of counsel and guidance and support, which is what I know I am, and I have a lot of people I know who do that too, where you can find out how you can take those wounds, those, hurt, those hurts from the past, unpack them and heal them. So they're no longer in the way. And then you can dive into depth. It's almost like having um, <laughs> an interesting analogy, removing blockages in pipelines or in, in drainage pipes in a house. Let's do, let's do not going to get into political stuff with oil, but in houses. Sometimes we have an, an, an inability to go deep because the pipe we want to... Hang on, let me, let me figure out this analogy. Just had the pipes, the pipes done in the house, so that's why it's on my mind right now. So... If you're looking, if you're at the top floor of a house and you want to get to the bottom floor through the pipes, it's going to sound strange. Okay, let me try this another way. It's not possible to get all the way through the pipe clearly when you've got a blockage in it. Same thing is true when you want to go deep in your consciousness. When you have wounds in the way, which are the blockages, it's hard to go deep and exposed and ex expressed and vulnerable. Because the wounds, in a way, are there to protect your vulnerability falsely because you don't trust that it's safe. When you heal your wounds, safety is automatic. When you heal your wounds, vulnerability is open to you. And you get to be deep. And I'm talking about this in any area, not just a relationship. But if you're doing this romantic relationship, it's a huge possibility to have an amazing experience in a relationship with your partner when both of you have got the willingness to go deep, which means you've got to be willing to face the wounds that are in the way. And healing the wounds is something, one, that I specialize in, and two, that I recommend everybody do the work to heal. I went through my own journey with that. And as I said, I have no, no fear about going deep because I don't have that block in the way anymore. If you want to go deep in your connection with other people, especially romantically, especially romantically, then it's important that you recognize that what may be in the way is just your own doubt because you have wounds that you haven't healed yet. And that may be why being superficial is safer. False safety, because you're not actually doing anything, we're not connecting, you're not going deep, you're not diving in, because you're stuck in this place where you don't have the, um, what's the word looking for? Trust in yourself. But if you really do the work and you go deep and you really find that place inside that is wounded, then when you heal it, it's like you can go all the way down to the depth of who you are. Now, the more people that do this, the more people as a global society, the more people in the culture that do the wound healing work, to heal themselves, to get to the depth where they can be fully vulnerable, fully open, fully deep, so to speak, then we are going to transform the planet. Yeah, this is a lot bigger than just a primary relationship. This is a chance to go deep in a way that would transform everybody's consciousness. I have certain relationships with myself, co colleagues and friends, where we go so deep, it's almost like we can solve the world's problems. Not that we will, but we have that feeling that it can be done. The more people that do the same thing, the more culturally will shift the planet. Interested? <laughs> it's not a manifesto, just a recommendation, just a um, um, suggestion of what's possible. So let's get back to dating for a minute because I was went off, when it went a whole different path than I was planning on going to. So depth in dating is powerful. I was actually reading an article today about the um, some like six, seven different reasons people have problems with online dating. One of the problems with online dating is it's so superficial. It is, because all you're doing is looking at a phone screen usually, maybe a computer screen, but a phone screen with some images and some copy and some text, maybe a little video. But it's so superficial because it's just a little sliver, a little slice of who that person is. So in some ways, it's almost impossible to know who that person is until you spend some time in their company, in their presence, likewise with you and with them and you. So online dating is a very superficial approach until you get beyond the first level, which is to get you connect with somebody. I just mean, just don't mean texting, I don't mean over the phone, I mean in person. So, when I'm talking about depth, it's something you can't really practice easily online. Maybe there's a way of doing it. I'm, I'm, I know people who have an amazing way of expressing themselves through their profiles. I'm just considering my thinking there, hang on a second. Yes, it is something like that. That you can be that, that blatant in your dating profile information. And when you go on dates, to speak your truth from a deeper place, especially once you've healed those wounds, by the way, I'll sidebar that. So focusing on what you want to do in love, focusing on what you want to be in love, focusing on how deep you want to go in love, 
is a good guiding principle to understand what love can really be about for you. From dating to following relationship and everything beyond. But it starts with you deciding to go deep. So you may want to look at your own dating profile after this and think about maybe you want to change some of the wording. Maybe some of the pictures. Maybe take the sunglasses off. Maybe you have more close-up pictures so people can see you. Maybe less shots with you amongst four other people. Just a suggestion. Because pictures tell a story. You know, say a picture's worth a thousand words. A video's worth a million. So understanding that your presentation has impact. And if you're going to play at a surface level and be superficial, then the results you're going to get back are also going to be at the surface and superficial. If you want depth, you've got to be willing to go deep. And if you're not willing to heal your wounds, you won't be able to go deep enough for that to happen. So I'll put some links in the comments for you to check out because frankly, I'm going to check out to use. One will be a discovery session with me because you may want to get some help in the area. And two is going to be my self-love meditation. I keep recommending it for a simple reason, that for many people those wounds are in the way because they haven't learned how to love themselves. Or rather, they've forgotten how to love themselves fully because they judge themselves based on the wounds inside. That could be a whole other talk as well. Hmm. Maybe that one tomorrow. Okay, so that's an interesting topic to play with as well. But here's the, short, here's, here's the um, shorthand version, the Cliff Notes version. When you have wounds inside you haven't healed, it is virtually impossible to fully love yourself. Fully love yourself. Let me be clear about that. So my self-love meditation, if you choose to accept it, <laughs> you choose to sign up for it, which I recommend you do, the link will be in the comments, will generally give you some opportunity to face those wounds. I should have warned you ahead of time about that. But the truth is, when you love yourself, then the love can create a healing space for your own wounds. I don't promise that it'll heal the wounds, but it'll give you an opportunity to see the wounds from a place that's much more loving versus reactive. Because if you've got wounds from past relationships, past breakups, traumas, challenges, upsets, they tend to be very reactive to what's happening and you tend to be reactive to them. There's no room for healing that place. Healing those wounds has to include loving. When I work with my clients, that's one of my secret weapons, <laughs> is to help them heal by loving them, loving themselves, so they can heal more easily. Healing is not done by um, excavation and drilling down, it's actually for in inclusive and healing by embracing. So, two links in the comments, the discovery session with me, and my self-love meditation, I recommend both of those if you're interested. And uh, consider for yourself, are you willing to go deep, or you wanna play at the surface? If you wanna go deep, I wish you well, I support you, and I encourage you to do it. If you wanna play at the surface, it's a choice, but you get to decide that. So before you go on a date this weekend, because today's Thursday, so this weekend's coming up, Consider for yourself what you're choosing, where you're choosing from. I've given you lots of little tips and insights in this talk. Take them to heart. Use them, play with them, embrace them. And again, check out, check the links in the comments I'm putting down after a sign off. It'll help you get what you want. So with that, I thank you for watching. By the way, this is my, this is my Facebook Live I do every day if you haven't seen this broadcast before. I do my talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. So join me live any day. But if you miss them, you can watch them in the replays. And there's two places you can watch them. One of the replays, one of the places for the replays is on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash you slash barryselby.author. Facebook doesn't show all of them though. So you see about two or three hundred of theirs you can watch in the video um, in the albums section, photo albums. There's videos there. However, if you want to go deeper and watch all of my broadcasts, I invite you to go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my channel and on there is a playlist which is called Messages from the Masculine, which is what the MFT on the front of this broadcast stands for. So you check out Messages from the Masculine, you can sort through all the titles, every single one of them is there, from newest to oldest, with titles you can search through and find what you're looking for and get some help. My passion, my joy is serving this way. And if this is helping you, great, let me know that. If you have any questions, also let me know. Comments below, you can do as you want. Click the links in the comments, check them out. I appreciate you getting some help and I would welcome you getting some help actually. And I'm here to help you. Simple enough. Thank you for watching my broadcast. This will be the end of this is the end of today's broadcast. I'll be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.